basement. And I want I want to talk about the basement teams for just a second. There are some teams this off season that just appear like stuck on the side of the road, like zero <laughs> momentum. <laughs> they are not going kill. anywhere. And and like you know who they are. Like I I would put Indiana and Atlanta in that category. And I'm tempted to put Dallas there, but at least I feel like Dallas has a plan. Dallas at I least think, made some strides last year. I, I think Dallas, they made the playoffs last year. They've got a ton of youth. They're investing in player development. They're going to try to get, you know, they're going to try to evaluate what they have before they make any rash decisions, which I respect. I would have done that last year, but whatever. So, like, they're on a longer timetable than I would like, but at least Dallas feels like they, you, you might be able to salvage them if you can roll them to a gas station. Right. Like, Atlanta and Indiana, just nobody, I mean, they don't have anybody in their front office that's able to successfully pitch, hey, come be the A1 here, we'll build the team around you. And if you're not able to do that, I understand listeners are hearing this right now, similar to our chat before the show, they're thinking like, yeah, but who would want to play there? I get it, but it's their job to make those places appealing. Like it's their job to say, hey, like if you don't like our coach, we can fire our coach. If you don't, if you don't like your teammates, like we can fire our teammates. Like we will put a team around you that can win, but like we come here and be our super max type of player. And they don't have anyone that's able to make a convincing argument for that. And so Atlanta's just, they're losing out on free agents. Indiana has been really, really quiet. Um, they also cut Kaiser Grandrezic and, and suspended another uh, player. Yeah, how do you, how do you Their cut Grandrezic like and, now. She was the head of all your marketing. She was the face of your franchise basically last year. And you cut her and don't do anything else. Yeah. It's, what it's, does she harm? At least be on the bench. It's never about who it. you fire. It's about who you hire. And if you're getting rid of her to make room for something else, that's fine. But, but you haven't done looks, that. Like you haven't done <laughs> it. So anyway, that's a long tangent. But like those those teams are just jammed right like they just don't right. feel like they're going anywhere not this off season dallas we're waiting and seeing because they were the seventh seed last year and i i do think they've got some stuff cooked up arike and mabry are both all-star caliber players they've got a lot more to work with so we'll see i think the mystics are like easily above all those teams even though they haven't had the success that we kind of associate them with since they won that title they've been super injured we've given them a pass and i think rightfully so because of all the injuries Feels like they have a lot of talent on paper and they just can't put it together. But I think they need to do something this year or it's going to feel like they're slipping. Like really slipping. Yeah, I, uh, I'd agree like with the, that. The dream of Tina Charles and Elena Deladon being a, a championship duo together, that's out the window now. They got to figure out what their 